Hi! In this video demonstration, we're going to take a, a look at another way of lighting our scenes. Uh, this time we're going to focus a little bit more on uh, uh, bright outdoor scenes with uh, daylight, environment light, and everything that comes along with having an atmosphere and a sunshine. Uh, the different thing about this kind of light is that we are going to, we're going to take a look at, uh, at a system for light, which is kind of something that includes a little bit more than just your average light. It includes everything is, that comes along with it, such as uh, atmospherics and uh, haze or fog or horizons and all that other good stuff that kind of comes along with our real world that we want to kind of try and simulate in our virtual world. Uh, in order to get us started, however, we're going to need to build a quick little scene. One that I've found in the past works really well for this is to just kind of create kind of an, uh, a very simple uh, and yet fun ocean horizon kind of scene. So if you follow along with me here and bear with me, we'll get to the lighting part uh, real soon. And uh, we'll take a look at the daylight system as well as utilizing photometric exposure controls to change your effects for your lighting. First thing we want to create here uh, is uh, we're just going to create a plane. This plane is going to simulate our ocean. I'm going to go ahead with our Create tab, Geometry under Standard Primitives, and we'll have our plane button there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and right away, once I toggle it on, I'm going to come down here to the parameters and just reduce these segments down to one for the length and width uh, because we don't need a lot of polygons for this. We're going to simulate these ocean waves uh, via textures. Uh, and then in our top view, I'm just going to drag click, drag, and draw out a good old standard plane here. Doesn't matter what size, we'll, fit, we'll, uh, we'll change that in our Modify tab, uh, as we always should, uh, to make it bigger and a little bit more matching of the ocean. I'm going to go to my Move tool here, just to be sure that this guy is kind of centered among my grid. Uh, and with this plane that I just created selected, I'll come down to my XYZ coordinates at the bottom of my screen, below my timeline, and uh, right-click on the two little uh, slider arrows uh, for both X, Y, and Z, just to zero that thing out and center it uh, in my virtual world here. Uh, the next thing I want to do is... Uh, I need to make sure that my final render is going to be of a proper size. Uh, in this case, we'll kind of stick to that uh, uh, HD image aspect ratio idea of a widescreen. So what we need to do next is go ahead and make sure that our render setup uh, is properly ready for us. Uh, when we open it up, uh, if you don't see render setup, NVIDIA mental ray up here, and the global illumination tab and all that other stuff, it means you're using the default scanline renderer. Uh, if you've saved a preset at all, uh, you can load it up real quickly there, which includes all of your environment effects, as well as your global illumination settings, etc., uh, that you can save from another lesson that we've done. If you haven't, that's okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this again real quickly, just to give you a better idea. Repetition is key anyway. Uh, here in the common tab, uh, the first place we want to check out is our output size. This drop down is usually default set to custom. Go ahead and change it to HDTV, uh, which is going to give us that uh, image aspect ratio that HD television has uh, recently brought us here now in the future. Uh, and it's going to give us that original 1080p, very, very large format. Go ahead and in that width, once you've changed it to HDTV, let's just drop that down to about 800. Uh, and it'll it'll automatically change the bottom one, 800 by 450, which will give us the right aspect ratio uh, of a widescreen HD television, but it's not going to give us that huge image so that we don't have to wait quite as long uh, to render our tests for this little demonstration. If you don't already have it, go ahead and put a check mark in the Force 2 sided box. Uh, it just helps things be a little bit more accurate uh, as far as uh, modeling and everything is concerned. And then scroll down all the way to the bottom of the settings, if you kind of click and just drag down here to the Assign Renderer, and make sure that NVIDIA Mental Ray is set there. Uh, if it's not, if you had the default Scanline Renderer here in the first place, uh, click the little Choose Renderer Browse button and load up the NVIDIA Mental Ray settings and say OK. All the rest of your Common Tab settings should remain the same, uh, but best to just double check and make sure that we've still got HDTV, 800 over 450 and force two-sided checked there. Uh, just to quickly kind of get back to that good starting 
magic number global illumination settings, we can jump over to our global illumination tab here. Uh, Final gather should defaultly be enabled, and we can put some of those uh, just real quick magic numbers that we've been learning for the last couple of lessons uh, in here just to get us started. Uh, we'll put in 300 rays per final gather point, uh, 35 to interpolate. Uh, we may increase that a little bit later depending on how uh, good our light's looking. And let's just bump the diffuse bounces up to at least two to get us started and change that noise filtering to probably very high just, just to get us going there. Uh, once you've done that, go to your renderer tab. Change that filter over to Mitchell. It just looks a little bit nicer. Uh, and we can leave the samples alone for now. We'll come back and adjust them a little bit later. Uh, once you've done all this, it's just a good idea so that we've got a good place to start from here on forward. Uh, you can come down to your preset tab, open up that drop down, and choose Save Preset there. Uh, it'll open up a, a default location in your 3D Studio uh, Max install folders where you can give it a name, uh, uh, light start, or, or something that makes sense to you. Uh, I've got a few of them saved here uh, as well. Uh, and then you can save that and quickly load it up just from the list in here or using the load preset uh, for the next time. So we don't have to make those changes every single time we come into 3D Studio. That gives us a good place uh, to jump off from. Okay. Once that's done, we can go ahead and exit out of there. And in my perspective view, I can turn on my safe frame so that I know exactly what I'm working with as far as the size of my final render. Uh, to do that, we're going to go ahead and hit Shift F, and that'll shrink our view a little bit, but it will make it the proper size so that anything that we move and set up from here on out uh, will work a little bit nicer for us. That in mind, we kind of move this uh, plane here that we've got. Uh, I might select it and go over to my Modify tab and just kind of even out these numbers here for us. Uh, maybe I'll give it a length of about 500 and a width of about 500 as well, just because the ocean's a fairly big place, and that's what we're kind of trying to simulate here, right? Uh, and then I'm just going to make uh, the viewport here kind of look as though we're creating a, right now my default color was pink, so I've got a pink ocean horizon line uh, here. And so I'm just going to kind of move that into place and then when I'm happy, I've got this kind of horizon line cutting my view in two. I'm going to create a camera by, by using the hotkey Control plus C, which will turn my perspective viewport into now a camera viewport. Then in my other setting, uh, my other viewports, I can go ahead and adjust that. Maybe I want to bring the target a little bit closer to the ocean and the camera a little bit closer down there as well uh, for a little bit more of a dramatic effect being uh, right down close in these waves as though we're bobbing up and down in them ourselves. Okay, uh, take some time to do that. Go ahead and pause this if you need and uh, play around with your camera until you see something along the same lines as I have here. Uh, doing a render real quick will show us exactly that, the, the default black background color being cut in half by whatever the default color that plane was that you created. Uh, mine was pink. And we can close that out and continue on here. Uh, now that we've got our camera mode, uh, well, we can go ahead and hit G to turn off that grid. Uh, and get it out of our way and just have the scene itself to work from from here on out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Alt W to make our scene a little bit bigger so that while we're, while we're doing this uh, we've got something to look at. And this ocean does not look like an ocean of water right now. It looks like a very uh, still ocean of, I don't know, Pepto-Bismol or something with this nasty color. So we're gonna hit M to open up our material editor and we're gonna we're gonna do uh, a very quick mental ray arc and design texture work for uh, that's a nice little template to start us out for water. Choose one of your empty material slots. Uh, and as long as Mental Ray is installed as your assigned renderer, uh, we can go ahead and click the giant uh, shader button here, which says Standard Now, and switch that default shader from Standard over to the Mental Ray shaders, and select Arc and Design uh, from there. Go ahead and say OK. The Arc and Design default shader shows up. Uh, we're going to make this easy on ourselves and just start with a template. Go ahead and open that template drop down. And down in the transparent materials in this list, you're going to find one at the very, very bottom that says Water, Reflective Surface. Go ahead and just select that one. 
And then we'll uh, I'll double click this to open up a preview for it and we can see exactly what we're looking at. It looks like we've got a default of some kind of ocean green looking water here uh, with a few waves in it that we'll probably adjust here a little bit as well. Uh, go ahead and click and drag and drop that onto our plane. We can do a quick test render here, but our scene's not going to look like much because water is very reflective and it's got nothing but that black background right now to reflect and no light really in the scene but the default lighting. So we're probably going to get almost nothing uh, at all in our scene. Uh, we're going to need to uh, adjust this probably as we go. We'll come back to this water uh, once we start getting going and adjust its uh, texture qualities uh, to fit the light that we're going about to make. Okay, so we'll just minimize that or, or X out of it. We can always get back there by just hitting M, uh, etc. Now that we've got at least a very, very basic, very, very default scene to work with, uh, we need to create our daylight system. Now, up until now, we've been on the Create tab, three buttons over into our lights. But you'll notice that no matter whether you're on Standard or Photometric, you will not see anything that says Daylight System, which is the word I keep using. The reason for that being is that the, the method of lighting we're about to do is not just a light. In fact, it is a light combined with a whole lot of other things uh, that make up uh, a simulation that is mimicking our own atmosphere on planet Earth. Where we find the daylight system is not under lights, but all the way over to the right-hand side of these buttons, you're going to find one that looks like two little gears called systems. Go ahead and click that to... Uh, open it up and you'll be at standard in the drop down menu uh, which is probably the only one that you've got unless you've got some other plugins installed and in these object types that we can create you will find daylight don't mistake it for sunlight it's a little bit different our daylight system comes packed with a little bit more uh, this is also the place where you're gonna come to create things like uh, bones or bipeds uh, for character animation later on uh, so we're going to start with this daylight system. Go ahead and click that button. A pop-up is going to show up, just like it did when we were doing our video demonstration for photometric lighting. Uh, and it says you're creating a daylight system. We recommend you use exposure control. Uh, now that we know what all those settings in our final gather and everything do for us, we're going to go ahead and, and take their recommendation on this daylight system uh, and say yes this time to using photometric exposure control. Uh, if you accidentally got ahead of yourself there and went ahead and clicked no just like we did the last time uh... don't worry because i am about to show you where we can turn this on uh... in case you did say no or off in case you want to get rid of it in the future uh... where exposure control is turned on if you go ahead and hit eight on your keyboards you'll open up your environment and effects panel uh... this is also under rendering environment uh... if you eight's not working for some reason uh, and you'll open up this environment panel where we were playing with the other day about changing the background color uh, for our first lighting experiment, uh, as well as putting in things like volume lights. And you'll notice that under exposure control here, it's already put something in that drop down, the Mr. Photographic Exposure Control, Mr. Standing for Mental Ray, of course. Uh, if you ever want to get rid of this, or your scene's shown up too dark and you can't figure out why, uh, you can always change the drop down to no exposure control and uh, you'll get uh, more light in your scene immediately because there's nothing stopping it from doing what it does. However, if you learn how to work with photographic exposure control, it really can be uh, a huge asset with all of these wonderful little settings here uh, in making your final version renders uh, a little bit more realistic, uh, just like our eyeballs and camera lenses do in the real world. Uh, we can control how much light we let in uh, using our exposure control settings. And we'll come back to these uh, in the future a few times uh, within the next couple of weeks and take a look at, uh, at how these uh, settings can, can help us a little bit more. When using a daylight system, if we accidentally leave this exposure control uh, turned off and go ahead and create by click and drag out a little compass rose here, let go, click and drag out a sunshine icon and click once more to finalize. With exposure control turned off, you might notice that everything gets very, very bright and washed out, uh, way overdone because we've just added a light, the intensity of the sun, and given our scenes absolutely no way to control that 
uh, brightness as to what we see in the camera. So it is always a good idea to go ahead and go back to your environment effects uh, and make sure that Mr. Photographic Exposure Control is turned on. And then we can take a look uh, a little bit nicer. And our light is now there. We've still got nothing but jet black in the background, but now we're starting to see some of those ocean waves here uh, that we can play around with. The daylight system we just created, I'm going to go ahead and just delete it and do it one more time for uh, repetition's sake. Uh, I've turned on my daylight system here, and I click and drag out a compass rose, let go, drag out with my mouse uh, a sunshine icon. It really doesn't matter how far you drag this out because it's going to simulate uh, as though the sun were as far away as it is in the real world. And then just click to create that icon. Uh, you'll notice that if you try to move it, uh, you're not going to be allowed uh, to move it because the, the daylight system is controlled by several different factors which we're about to take a look at. Uh, the size of your icon, the length of the, the target, and the size of your compass rows really don't matter for anything other than display purposes so that you can see the icon and select it uh, and adjust its settings a little bit easier. What we want to do is select that sun icon, the one that looks like kind of a half dome with an arrow sticking out of it, pointing towards our compass rows. With that selected, we're going to move over to our Modify tab, which is where we do all of our settings changes, and take a look at what this daylight system is comprised of. As we are using Mental Ray here, uh, we're going to start out with some basic settings that work best with the Mental Ray rendering software. For example, our daylight parameters, the very, very top rollout up here at, at uh, the beginning, has two dropdowns one for sunlight and one for skylight. Here's the first hint that we're dealing with more than an average light. It comes equipped with two different kinds of lights inside of it already. No longer do we need to make a separate skylight out here for environment and ambient light because the system comes packed with both in one. We've got sunlight which is our direct light source and the skylight which is our ambient or environment light source. We want to take a look at these drop-down menus because we've got a few choices. Uh, we've got a few extras if you've got some other plugins installed, uh, but we don't want to use standard because we're using the Mental Ray Renderer, which is a little bit nicer uh, quality and gives us a little bit better of an image. So what we want to do is match it. Uh, the Mr. Sun, again, anytime you see this Mr., that stands for Mental Ray, Mental Ray Sun. We want to go ahead and select that one for our sunlight. And vice versa, we're going to come down here to the Skylight drop-down, and select Mr. Sky as well, or Mental Ray Sky. Upon selecting the Mental Ray Skylight, another warning should pop up and open up here, and it's going to say you're creating a Mental Ray Skylight. Uh, would you also like to add a special environment map that comes along with this light? Uh, and this is, it's recommended to add the, the Mr. Physical Sky, or the Mental Ray Physical Sky environment map. Go ahead and say yes to this question, because it's a very good uh, place to start for this. And just to let you know that every time we do something that's automatic here, I'm also going to show you where to find it uh, and how to add it yourself in case you accidentally say no or you want to change that later on. Uh, again, back to our environment rollout. Go ahead and hit 8 on your keyboards or find it under the rendering menu. Uh, and you'll notice that there is a, an environment map now loaded in that background uh, channel button for us. Uh, if we had clicked on this, you'd get your material map browser and under the mental ray, you should be able to find the Mental Ray Physical Sky as well. What this is, uh, is just a nice background image, uh, a procedural map, basically, that we can uh, use uh, to simulate sky. Uh, if you go ahead and hit the Render button, you'll see it right away. Kind of a, a hazy toward the bottom, bluer at the top, uh, and then we've got this, this ugly thing that, that is actually the simulation of our ground horizon that looks kind of like uh, dirty smog, which we'll take care of here soon. However, already our daylight system is looking a hundred percent better, just getting rid of that nasty black background uh, and giving us something a little bit more natural like a blue uh, atmospheric sky. Uh, like all channel buttons, you can kind of click and drag this to an empty material slot, mark it as an instance, uh, and take a look at some of the uh, settings that you can change. We're not going to bother changing any right here now. Uh, but some of the stuff that you can do uh, may include making your sunshine uh, bigger or smaller uh, to simulate things like either sunshine or, or moonlight 
uh, etc as well as put in an image for your actual background uh, or work with some things like haze and ground coloring and stuff we're not going to do it here I just wanted to let you know that that is always a possibility whenever you add a channel uh, map into a channel of any kind you can always edit it in your material editor instead however we're just gonna leave that mental ray physical sky there if you accidentally said no go ahead and click that and find it in here and add it there as well and what will happen is uh, it'll load it in and take a look at some of these settings down here to change it uh, and we'll, we'll have uh, an easier time dealing with this it kinda of puts some of those settings in for us uh, as is Again, our background got kind of this ugly smog looking horizon line that doesn't match the horizon line we created for our ocean. Uh, but we're already looking a little bit more like natural daylight here. Uh, we've definitely got some work to do uh, to simulate anything a little bit better. Uh, starting with probably now that we can see uh, our water texture here. So let's close this down and then kind of adjust that now. Hit M to open up your material editor once again and choose that texture uh, that we created for water. At this point we may say uh, and take a look at that image that we previously rendered uh, maybe we want our ocean to be a deeper blue uh, or a magical mystical purple uh, red green whatever uh, and we can adjust that just based on artistic preference uh, to get a little bit nicer quality of an image. Everything's a little flat right now. Uh, so what I might do is take this diffuse color here and maybe bring it into the deeper blue a little bit uh, maybe even you know bordering on navy to purple uh, and try another render just to see if I can get any more contrast out of this that's going to separate it from our sky since water is so reflective uh, I think that did pretty good I mean, a little bit uh, purple blue uh, color it may not be perfectly natural but uh, it as far as artistic preferences go uh, we don't have to match what uh, what nature does necessarily to get a best quality image. Uh, go ahead and play around with that. If you want to, you know, get some purple waves or some some tropical green or something like that, you can always adjust this uh, and uh, experiment a little further. I'll start with that. Next, we're going to take a look. We're going to go down a little bit further and uh, dig into our mental ray textures here. Uh, if we go down to the special purpose maps rollout. Uh, you'll notice that it's already put a procedural bump map texture in there for us uh, under our special purpose bump map. Uh, we can click on it to dig into this procedural texture settings uh, where we've got ocean parameters, waves, uh, how thick they are, how big they are, how small they are, etc. Uh, looking at our current image, uh, these waves are a little bit spread out and kind of blurry for my opinion since we're so close to the water here. Uh, we can try and let's say reduce the largest wave to maybe 5 and the smallest down to maybe 0.3 and do another test render just to see if we can get more waves and detail out of it. While that leaves us a little bit speckled here, I definitely think that we've got uh, at least some more water to work with that's uh, a little choppier. We can also change things like quantity uh, steepness, maybe a 1.5 would give us some uh, topsier, turvier waves, uh, choppier looking ocean. Uh, again, play around with this stuff to your heart's content and uh, uh, see what you like the best there. I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is and hit the go to parent button to back out of it. Uh, and I think that's a decent place to start uh, with our ocean water, uh, at least there. Let me pull that over to the purple just for fun. There, a nice contrast between our light blue sky now and our deep blue uh, ocean, since we're clearly far away from anything resembling land. All right, we can shut down our material editor now. One of the things that 3D Studio does very well uh, now is that our real-time renderer simulates uh, light and everything pretty decently for us. Uh, as far as our, our textures are concerned, we can we can kind of turn. Uh, that show shaded material map in viewport on and we're gonna we're gonna set up our, our viewport settings just so that we can get a better idea of what's going on in here before we do a test render first things first the background is ugly gray gradient uh, default a la 3d studio max so what we're gonna do is uh, select our camera viewport and say alt B on our keyboard 
which is just going to bring up your viewport configuration. You can also get there by clicking on that realistic menu and hitting configure and then go over to the background tab. We're going to tell it to use the background environment please and we can apply that to view or hit OK and then our mental ray sky should show up here. Another thing that we can do to make this scene just look a little bit better as far as uh, showing our bump maps and, and other things is we can come up to the views menu go down to show materials in viewport as and then choose that bottom one that says realistic materials with maps and give it some time to think and that will start to show us some of that reflectivity uh, and other things that uh, this is going to do fairly well at. It looks like we are missing some of our bump map but at least we can get a, a decent idea of what's going on here now uh, for the future. Then select our light again and we'll come back over and check out some more settings. Uh, as it is, we cannot move our sunshine because we are not set on this original daylight parameters uh, to manual. We've got three choices, as a matter of fact. The first one that it always defaults us with is date, time, and location. And if you have that one selected, you can always hit this cool setup button, and it'll take you over to the motion tab here with some settings here, where we can tell it... Uh, where in the world we'd like to simulate. If we want to go ahead and get the location button, bring up our map of the world here, uh, we can actually uh, change this out to, let's say, world, and click on our map. And we can go to Honolulu, Hawaii, and say, let's uh, simulate the uh, atmospheres in Hawaii for right now at, right now, 12 hours, uh, high noon, on whatever currently the date is it usually defaults with. That might have a subtle change but not a terrible one just depending on where on the earth that we want to simulate. Uh, if you're trying to simulate an ocean scene it's gonna have to be in the Pacific. It's not a very good idea to choose uh, rural Ohio here uh, as far as lighting is concerned. So that's one way of adjusting that. Uh, in order to get back to our daylight settings we can either uh, we can go right over to the modify tab again which brings us right back here we've also got the op option to load in a weather data file uh, I'm not sure where to get these I'm sure they're all over the internet if you do a search uh, and it'll kind of come complete with a lot of that uh, information if you want to simulate something super exact uh, from real-world weather and time we've also got the option to manually uh, change the position of our light source, our sunshine. So if we go ahead and mark manual, then all of a sudden you'll realize that the move tool now uh, is allowing you to manipulate it. And then we can, in our one of our other viewports, I used to use my top view here, uh, we can go ahead and we can make it say, you know, as, as absolutely high noon as possible, uh, pull it off just a little to the to the back and the right, and adjust that sunshine until we're kind of happy with how the shadows and highlights are falling on our waves. We can always come back to that and we'll play a little bit more with that a little bit later on. Uh, we've also got uh, our next rollout here is the, the Mental Ray Sun Basic Parameters which gives you that uh, on off button, light on or off, as well as how bright your sunshine is. If you want a little bit less uh, bright of a day you can always reduce that. If you need a little bit more light you can always increase that number and uh, brighten up your scene a little bit. We're going to go ahead and leave that at 1.0 because it's kind of already a pretty good uh, sunshine looking uh, way to begin. Your shadows are defaulted on. You can increase the, the softness as well as the samples on those shadows a little bit from here. Uh, which will increase your render times as well as your light calculation and all that stuff. Uh, we're not going to change anything in these. We're just going to minimize this one here for now. And we'll go to the next one down is the, the sun photons, which has a little bit more to do with uh, caustic reflection light. We'll get into that another day here. We'll minimize that as well and just kind of skip over it for now. And down onto our mental ray sky parameters. The skylight also has a multiplier. Remember, uh, everything else we've done, we've made a direct light source and one of those skylights over here so that we've got two different lights kind of working with each other. Both of those come together with that daylight system. So this is just the skylight parameters that we can adjust. We can brighten up the environment light as well as do something like get rid of this nasty horizon color here background that looks more like dirty smog to us than anything. Uh, I can you know adjust it by changing it to white, maybe get some 
cloud banks off in the back or something along that. Uh, we've also got a drop down that allows us to change how the skylight model works. We're going to leave it at haze driven for now and stay basic. Uh, underneath that you've got a haze driven sky and how much haze you want it to have. Increasing that uh, will of course add haze to your environment. Uh, but if you want to do a post-apocalyptic kind of uh, smoggy atmosphere you more than well can by increasing this and we'll play with this one uh, as well a little bit later on. Underneath here we've got uh, some parameters for the sky uh, and that is our horizon line. Right now we've got this this kind of grotesque line being drawn. We've got our horizon line that we made from our ocean and one that's being displayed uh, in the sky map. If we adjust the height uh, just a little bit, maybe a negative 1 to a negative 1.2 we can drop that uh, extra horizon line below the surface of our water so that our render, final render, doesn't have any of those kind of cloudy looking smog ground horizons uh, in the background at all. That's one good way of, uh, of kind of adjusting that. Uh, we've also got the option, if I go ahead and zero that back out on height, to increase the blur on this a little bit so we can fade it out uh, a little bit more by let's say go about 0.5 and then our horizon line, whoops wrong viewport our horizon line will uh, soften at least and, and now we've got definitely something that looks a little bit more like clouds in the distance rather than a nice solid line uh, so again depending on what your project uh, is going to require. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll just put the blur up to 1 and we'll, we'll negative 1.0 that height out to kind of get rid of that distance. We want a nice clear sunshiny day here. Okay, so there we are. Uh, we've also got the ability to change the color that night will be, uh, which we'll talk about here in a moment, as well as some, some non-physical tuning, and this stuff is a little bit more artistic in choice. Uh, we've got the ability to increase or decrease a red-blue tint uh, if I do like a negative 0.1 just a little bit, uh, we might be able to get a crystal clear bluer sky rather than a more kind of a foggy or faded or hazy sky, uh, just depending on my artistic preference. Uh, again, if I do a positive number, we're going to get uh, a little bit more in the yellows uh, and reds uh, and stuff like that as we go up to that 1.0. So I'm just going to kind of do a negative point. Uh, I don't know, one five or something, get my sky nice and pretty blue. Uh, we've also got a saturation number. Uh, the higher I raise that, the more color I get. The lower I raise that, the least color I get. So if you're thinking about uh, uh, overcast or cloudy days, you might want to try lowering that saturation number. If you're thinking about crystal clear, nice and sunny blue days, you might think about raising that saturation number. Uh, anything below one will give you grays. Anything above one is going to give you uh, whatever that color you really originally chose, nice and bright and uh, inviting there. So I've kind of gone a 2.0, maybe a 1.5, and I can do a couple of these test renders uh, just to kind of get my uh, choices here nailed down as to what I can do in the future if I want to do a different kinds of sky setup. So this uh, the non-physical tuning can come in quite handy, you know, if you want to get... Uh, crisper blues or yellows or sunsets or nighttime scenes uh, and we can go uh, pretty extreme with some of that as far as an artistic preference is concerned. Uh, a realistic preference, clearly that's probably bluer than any sky we've ever seen but you know what, who says we have to stick to reality here? Uh, we'll go ahead and just kinda leave those red blue tint negative 0.2 and maybe a saturation of 1.5 uh, as far as uh, we are concerned here a little bit. Uh, at this point, uh, we're kind of done as far as daylight's concerned here. We've got some other settings which we might talk about here in just a moment. Uh, everything underneath there has to do with kind of the mental ray settings, which for right now we're going to ignore. Uh, but what we're going to do here is go over to our Create tab. Let's go back over to our Geometry. Uh, and let's put something in our scene uh, to add a little bit of interest so that we can really see what the light and our, our water texture is kind of doing here. Uh, let's go with a good old teapot uh, and we'll make a, I don't know, kind of a good old yellow-green uh, teapot here in our ocean. 
it changed me back to red. That's okay. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of click to drag out a teapot and kind of sink it into my ocean here a little bit, maybe. Uh, go over to the modify tab uh, and uh, maybe make it a radius of about 35. And we'll add about 12 segments just to get a little bit smoother. And maybe put that over here. And if that doesn't add a little, maybe we can use our rotate tool and kind of add a little bit of bob and twist to it. As though this uh, Alice in Wonderland here teapot is bobbing in our ocean. I can just go ahead and change the color uh, here for now, although that's a very, very bad idea. Uh, these, uh, these object colors are not textures. Don't use them as textures. Uh, so just to be on the good side, we're going to go ahead and open up our material editor again, choose another empty uh, material slot, and we're just going to choose the color that we want uh, from here, uh, and maybe the specular color white, and just assign that to our teapot, rather than be lazy and do it uh, with just that, that modified color there. Uh, let's go ahead and take another render and check out how our sunlight functions with uh, another object in our ocean scene. We've got some speckling going on here in our ocean, which we can go ahead and take care of, but uh, the added reflections, uh, as well as a different kind of surface and color uh, in our scene, you can really kind of see how this uh, environment system, this daylight system is functioning for us, uh, giving us uh, some pretty accurate looking uh, daylight here uh, for lighting outdoor scenes. Uh, let's go ahead and try and take care of some of this speckle, probably with our anti-aliasing settings. Uh, in your render frame window, if you've got Mental Ray installed, you can adjust them right here a little bit. We can kind of bump that up to a 1.0 quality uh, and just try again. Which will, of course, make your renders take a little longer. But already we can see that it's minimizing on that uh, kind of pixelated looking uh, speckle. So that's pretty good. Again, the other place you find those settings is uh, F10 to open up your render setup. Go to your renderer tab and you can adjust the quality. It defaults you at 0.25. You can bump it up to 1, uh, maybe even increase the minimum just a little bit uh, when you're ready to do your final render uh, to, to get rid of any unwanted uh, pixelation from the detail as far away as it's going to go ahead and get here. Okay? Now that we see how daylight system here is working very well for us, uh, we can kind of play around with this and experiment uh, to get some different results out of it. Uh, right now we've got a high noon, brilliant blue sky uh, above our ocean scene here, and it really does. It looks, it looks quite good just like that. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here real quick. My fans are going crazy on my computer here. And let's select our daylight system here now again and see what else we can do with this thing. Uh, it really does have a hell of a lot more capability than what we've shown so far. First thing I want to show you is the sunshine as far as the position in the sky. You'll notice that it does have a target which is kind of attached to our compass rose here. Uh, let's take our left hand view uh, and move our sun until it tilts into view and you'll notice the saturation and the coloring change here. Uh, as we dip that sunshine down, as well as something amazing and miraculous, we actually have a sunshine that will appear uh, when it gets low enough in our horizon. Uh, moving your sunshine down in here will automatically kind of position this. We can move our sun to any of these locations that we truly want uh, to check this thing out in. I'm going to put it uh, between our teapot and the other side of our thing, and let's do another quick test render here. Uh, whereas it's going to try its best to simulate uh, what the lighting is going to look like in uh, Earth atmosphere during sundown. Uh, right, our shadows now in completely encompassing the teapot. The bright blues have been muted, uh, just like happens in the real world when the sun starts going down. Uh, as well as that Kelvin temperature has become a little bit more to the yellow and warm side here. Uh, which will bring me up to another point. You won't see your sunshine here until it has uh, finished rendering, as that's kind of the last minute post effect. We'll let it finish this first time here, just so we can see that. There's our sunshine, uh, and now it's working on all of the reflective light from that sunshine, and we can really get kind of a fun, atmospheric, uh, finished product here. We've got a little bit 
uh, extra blue in here because of the original settings that we made. So let's go ahead and shut this down now and come back to, now that we've got our sunshine here, our sky settings again. Uh, right down here, our non-physical tuning, right? Uh, if we go ahead and increase that red-blue tint, not from a negative 0.2, but all the way to a 1, you see we start to get this super golden sunset uh, vibe happening here. As well as, let's say, uh, you know, we can do a saturation at 2, 1, or anywhere in between that uh, to kind of really adjust uh, more and more what we're starting to see. Our sky turns uh, yellow, orange to red instead of any blue left over in it, which can kind of give us a, a whole new different uh, mood or, uh, or anything like that that, that we may... Uh, desire here in the future. Other things we can do might be increase the uh, skylight parameter multiplier. Uh, if we want this to be a really bright golden sunset or sunrise, decrease it. If we want it to be a little bit more uh, orangey, dusky, dark, mysterious, vampiric, uh, hunter's moon red. Uh, so all of these settings uh, give you innumerable amounts of things uh, to try and do. Also this sky model that we've left at haze driven comes in handy here uh, for some environment effects in this daylight system. Uh, rather than having to add extra atmospheric effects like volume lights and stuff like that, we've got this haze number here that we're just, let's just bump that up a little bit, uh, that we can add some haze to our environment uh, as well as we've got this down underneath here uh, we can put a check mark in the aerial perspective box, and suddenly we have control over visibility distance. Uh, you know, you hear pilots say, visibility is at nothing. Let's reduce that distance to about 50 and do another test render just to see uh, what we can come up with here, which is, uh, again, for an outdoor scene, something absolutely wonderful can happen with this kind of stuff. And now we've got this fog rolling in at sundown or sunrise, one of the two, with this brilliant gold uh, and reddish hued color. Uh, and the mood has changed completely just by bringing the sun down a little bit and adjusting our uh, red blue tint saturation and haze driven factors. With that finished rendering there. Uh, some other things that we can we can kind of play around with here, right? Our sun is, is fairly small here now. Uh, so we can kind of play around with some, some extra fun things that uh, we took a look at a little while ago. If we go up to our render settings, we go ahead and F10 to open those up uh, or click the render setup button or find it under the rendering menu, of course, and go over to our renderer tab here. Uh, we can scroll all the way down into the camera effects area and we've got these fun kind of camera shaders uh, that can really help us uh, play around with lighting and stuff like that uh, here. We've got several of them that we'll talk about in the future here but for right now we've got this one that is default turned off the output checkbox in camera shaders. Put a check mark in there uh, and then it defaults you with this uh, channel already assigned to the glare shader. Uh, if we go ahead and click and drag that to an empty slot uh, in our material editor, mark it as an instance and say OK. Uh, and we've got some controls over this glare. Uh, just defaultly, let's do another render. And let's actually cancel that. Let me go to region render here uh, and just get this uh, kind of square area just so that we can see what our sun's going to do here. A little faster than waiting on the entire thing. And then at the end, it'll apply that uh, glare shader, which is kind of overblowing uh, our sun and that kind of very sparkly uh, glare and, and glow that's happening there. Uh, and we can play around with some of these sh these uh, guys over here. Maybe the spread we can drop down to one uh, and try again and see if that uh, does anything a little bit nicer or better. Or maybe we can increase it uh, for some real horizon effects. Uh, nice hazy, very sparkly down here off of all of these uh, sunshine reflections. Let's actually increase that so we can see that whole uh, area there. Uh, maybe we can increase the quality, reduce the spread, uh, and really kind of start to see what some of these camera shaders might be able to do for us, like this glare, uh, if we want to add some mystique and extra atmosphere uh, to this simple reflective light here.
watch as it oh, over blasts there because my quality is way too high. Let's go back down to about two. And let's just take a look at what happens to the reflective light on our ocean here uh, as that glare shader kind of brightens everything up uh, and makes it a little bit uh, a little bit more miraculous there. One more time, it uh, changed the spread a little higher to 1.5. Our sun will get a little bit blown out, but uh, it's fun to play with and experiment with uh, regardless. Uh, and you can really get some very magical, kind of sparkly looking wow effects going on in there. All right, let's go ahead and take that region rendering off, go back to view, close down our render setup there uh, a little bit. And let's take a look at uh, some of the other things that we can do as far as uh, photometric exposure control can give us or that we can do with, uh, with our lighting here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that glare. We may come back to uh, edit some of it later on, but it's always here now in our material editor uh, to come back to. Back over here to our daylight system settings. Uh, what happens if we reduce that red-blue tint to zero? not negative one, let's just go with zero, uh, as well as that saturation down to zero. Uh, and then suddenly we have a almost entirely gray, black and white kind of cloudy uh, thing happening here. We see a little bit of that green from that teapot, but the saturation has really muted everything out uh, to give us a, kind of a, of a dreary looking scene here. Uh, as well as, you know, our sun will still kind of be up here in the clouds. We may need to move it because that doesn't look very realistic, but you might really get that kind of, uh, I don't know, cold London Ocean uh, feeling just by reducing and changing around that uh, non-physical tuning settings in here. Uh, we may also be able to go ahead and play around with some of the, photo the photographic exposure controls uh, a little bit here. So let's, let's turn this off and let's go ahead and hit 8 on our keyboards to open up that environment rollout again. And let's take a look down here to our photometric mental ray photographic exposure controls a little bit. Uh, some of the tools that we've got at our, at our uh, use here, it'd be the value. Uh, the lower this gets, the brighter your scene. The higher this gets, the dimmer or darker your scene is going to get. Uh, I believe it defaults us around 15. We'll go ahead and leave it there for right now. And then we can come back down in here where we've got some even more some extra controls over our uh, color of our light as far as saturation uh, and our white point go. Let's uh, turn up the color saturation in, in the exposure controls to maybe a 1.2. Uh, and let's change our Kelvin scale. Right now it's at 6500, which is kind of brilliant white light. Uh, if we reduce it to, let's say, I don't know, 3,000, 2,750, uh, something else completely happens to our scene, whereas it, uh, it switches modes from being grayscale or even that golden sunlight color to having an overall blue effect uh, on it. Let's also up our vignetting, which is uh, towards the edges of our image, we'll get this kind of darkening effect uh, happening, a little darker and, and, and blur things out towards the edges. Uh, if I increase that to about 10, you'll see what I'm talking about there. And it gives us a little bit, uh, almost like a dusky or a nighttime or a I'm closing my eyes uh, feeling uh, to this guy. Uh, let's, let's take a quick render and just see what the heck has happened to our scene in the final version here. We've still got that haze. Uh, our daylight system itself is set to having zero red-blue tint and no saturation. But the photographic exposure control... Uh, set into a bluer spectrum of color uh, is actually making it uh, feel like our daylight system is more like a nightlight system where our sunshine brilliant in the sky up here uh, may even look more like a moon than a sun or, or some distant star planted in the background lighting up this very magical blue dusky evening for us. At this point it, it adds that glare and we can kind of see that things are a little out of control there. Uh, we can actually go back into our render setup for the moment here uh, or back over into here and kind of reduce the quality to one, maybe the spread at two, 
and try this again. Uh, I'll go with reg region rendering so that we're not waiting forever. And just try and test a smaller area so that we can maybe get that right uh, to simulate starlight or moonlight a little bit different. There we go, something very bright with still some of that magical sparkle. I'm thinking, you know, Jungle Book on the River here. Uh, and our daylight system becomes something entirely different, uh, including maybe we add a, a little bit uh, more color saturation to this, or less color saturation to this, and we dip down then into more dusky purples uh, to grays. You know, the lower our saturation gets, of course, the more color is, is removed. So if we do a 0.75, that brilliant blue that we had before is now kind of a a tinted shade of dusk and purple happening in our sky, a little bit more nighttimey as well. And now we've got uh, werewolves howling at the moon feeling with our haze and everything else going on here. Uh, let's change that back to view and do kind of one more final render of the overall effect. And then we will uh, let you go off onto your own exploring and checking out all of the cool things that we can do with photometric exposure controls and the daylight system uh, for the rest of this lesson. We'll just let this finish rendering out real quick. And our daylight system has become a rather eerie yet magical at the same time nighttime full moon scene. Okay.